I have them come to my class, introduce them to the writing lab, and let them know what I'm expecting. Because as you know, this Friday is crazy busy. Oh, that reminds me of the picture. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. I had to let something let people into Zoom uh, first. All right, I'm gonna make a start to Okay, uh, so we will definitely rock and roll. Um, all right, so let me formally greet everybody. Hello, happy Friday, everybody. All righty, so thank you all, all for joining and being here today. And also thank you for everyone who is joining us via Zoom. I'm very excited. Uh, today, uh, we are ending off our University Institute 2023 Professional Development Week. So kudos to all of you all, everyone online. So kudos to you all, everyone who have put in the effort in terms of how uh, we are going to make this fall semester to be absolutely amazing, innovative, and engaging for our students. So I'm very, very excited uh, to be uh, showcasing uh, something that is going to be beneficial to everyone that is joining us, uh, not just in terms of academic engagement, but also in, ter in terms of business practices. So um, uh, if you did not know, I'm very happy to announce, and it's going to be more announcements that is going to be coming down a pipeline. But Houston Tillerson University has now been named an Adobe Creative Campus. This is a big deal. This is a, a huge deal, actually, because there's not many institutions um, uh, here, uh, uh, not especially HBCUs. Actually, I think it's only two other HBCUs, but there's not many institutions that have been named as a, an Adobe Creative Campus. And I'm not just speaking of us using Adobe Sign, okay? There is so much creativity behind Adobe. And we had this summer, an amazing group of distinguished faculty. There were 10 faculty that took time out of their summer for a whole week, actually more than a week, because it was working behind the scenes and uh, um, thinking about how they were going to go about with uh, making teaching and learning uh, completely interactive with students and, and engaging and kind of taking away kind of from the old school methods of just simply uh, just having like a paper syllabus for an example. So I'm very excited of the Adobe uh, faculty fellows, as we're calling them. They were an affinity group that took, again, time this summer to work with Adobe representatives to get certified as Adobe faculty fellows. And um, this is, again, something stellar because uh, understanding and learning all of the Adobe tools and software programs, such as Adobe Express and Adobe Rush, having students and thinking about how they would go about with doing podcasts for uh, an activity, a class assignment, how they can be creative with meeting the curriculum requirements um, uh, that is posted in the class, but doing it creati creatively. For instance, if you're gonna hear from Dr. Kruger about how to be able to create their own website, which is so simple, but so engaged, allowing them to be creative. So I am excited for everyone and um, pause real quick because I have other people that's joining. I don't want to show here. Um, okay, so we have others that are joining us. So a very big welcome. One second. Okay, good. All right, because I didn't want anyone to not miss out on all of that what you're about to see. So again, uh, this summer, the group of faculty had the opportunity in getting certified with Adobe Express, Adobe Rush. But guess what? It does not stop there. Everyone that is tuning in, everyone here, faculty and staff, every one of you all will have a license to be able to go into the Adobe Creative Cloud. And what that means is that you get access to all of the Adobe products. So you even get Firefly. Uh, you're going to be able to even access Photoshop. So again, the creativity that is at your fingertips so that where you can be able to task your students in completing projects and utilizing these new innovative tools, okay? So I'm gonna stop there. I am excited for what you are gonna to witness today. You are gonna first hear from Dr. Kruger, who is our faculty fellow here at uh, Houston Tillotson, also a professor of English. So she's gonna showcase her e-portfolio where she's gonna show us some of, uh, first her electronic syllabus, you heard that right, okay? We're moving to electronic syllabus. Why not send your students a link and they can be able to follow along and knowing exactly what is required of them than a static Word document, okay? Or just actually use it even uh, together as a supplement. 
So uh, you're going to see an electronic uh, syllabus. You're going to also see a course that has been identified for uh, uh, freshmen. And then also, to, so, sorry, for your uh, uh, upper level English class. And then also you're going to be able to see her teaching portfolio. After Professor Kruger, we're going to hear from then Dr. Stewart, who is our chair for English. And another, we love Dr. Woo! Stewart. And I have to even put a, a pub here is because Dr. Stewart is truly the heartbeat for this whole entire project. Oh, uh, I had the opportunity. Forgive me. Okay. All righty. Especially um, person in this office. So yes. <laughs> All righty. So again, for everyone that's joining, welcome, welcome. But as I was saying, uh, today's lineup, you're going to hear from Dr. Kruger. Then you're going to hear from Dr. Stewart. And as I did want to give people their flowers, I have to say, this whole entire project with us becoming an Adobe Creative Campus is in part the Dr. Stewart. Um, um, I am so excited because she has already piloted this before we even made this campus wide last year for her content and layout class. And where every one of her students created their own logos and their own website, everything to help them to think about graphically, graphically designing for companies and for projects. And you're gonna speak more on that. So listen in to the amazing things that Dr. Stewart has in mind and what's, uh, what we're gonna do. And last but not least, we're gonna hear from natural sciences, none other than Dr. Rosa Mino. So I'm very excited. So guess what? You're getting the best of all worlds, all disciplines here. So everyone listening in, again, this is not just for academics, all disciplines, yes, but also too, if you're working in a business office or if you're working in the president's office or in student affairs, Everyone now has access to the Adobe Creative Cloud. So think about how we engage students and how we can be creative doing that. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kruger. Okay, very quickly, I just wanna say a couple of things. Um, for one, I'm not going to assume that you have not already been creative because I'm one of those creative people. I've done a lot of this stuff before, um, joining the Adobe Fellow class. Um, so there's another Adobe Fellow class coming up and Dr. Miles is gonna keep you guys informed on it. I'm, I'm not talking to y'all, I'm talking to the people. <laughs> um, there'll be another class coming up so you can learn all of this stuff if you have not been using it. If you have been using it, you could have been like me where you were using Canva and then you were using Wix and then you were using like, like four or five different programs to create what can be done in a one-stop shop with the Adobe um, access that you guys now have. So I'm going to share what I have and I'm going to be adding more to it and let's get started. All okay. right. So this is my teaching portfolio um, and I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be adding more to it because I think it's a little text heavy right now. I'm going to be adding some more video, but I called Houston Tillotson University home before the term family was ever here <laughs> and back when it was still a college. When I was in middle school and high school, I would come up to campus for upper bound program for summer classes. There was a dance every Friday night and, and you can continue reading this, but I wanted to add something personal about my connection to HT so that the students know that I was right here with them. Um, so that's just something more personable that I wanted to share with my students. So that's my background with HT. In addition to my background, I included my bio which says a little bit more about my academics and my scholarship area. Um, so I talked about being a mother, a writer, an artist, mm. a public speaker, uh, some past awards, some of my content area interests. Um, I'm, I'm loving, you know, manga and anime and mm. I write musicals. So I included all of that information in there also so that my students can get to know me as a person, um, make it more personable, build those relationships, and then, you know, students see what they have in common with me. Uh, moving forward, I put my teaching philosophy, like how I teach, what I um, focus on in my teaching. I'm all about building relationships and communication. Um, so I want students to know that. Here is a picture that I included. Uh, I kind of kept my palette very colorful because oh, okay. students are interested in that. But this is one of my past classes, poetry and performance. Um, so I wanted them to see a picture with me with students. I'm, I'm very student centered, so that was important to me. Some of the courses that I teach, I included a list of courses there. I need to add some more, but um, the creative integrated courses, which I'm gonna, I, I linked it right into my teaching portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll include more links as I build it more, but 
Uh, we're going to take a look at English 3327, which is poetry and performance, one of my favorite classes to teach. So I'm going to click on that. And it links to another site, which is specific for a course. So the first one was a general overview. This one's specific to a course, poetry and performance. Um, and our focus this semester is past, present, and future. So first I started off with a video that I created and then embedded right into the site. Nice. It's probably the little mic, the black deck in front of me to the little kiosk. Okay, well, when you send this out, they can look at it, but I basically used a poem to introduce myself and do a, a little quick overview in poem format so that my students know, hey, this is what you're going to be doing. Um, a lot of you with AI are moving towards more presentation based work this semester, um, just because it, it cuts down on plagiarism and what AI is capable of. And so I wanted to make sure I had a video because my students are going to be videoing some of the poems that they create in class. Um, I went through why, what, who, where, how, and then I went into an assignment overview because this is the digital syllabus. Our first assignment will be a lip sync battle so I can assess the performance of the students before they even start writing poetry. Um, and just kind of give them something fun to do. And that allows them to uh, sort of bond with each other as a class. Everybody can be silly. And then when they start talking about serious topics in the poems, then we've already created the safe space in the course. Mm. Um, then we move through poems that reflect on their past, their present, and their future. And that's a one minute, a two minute, and a three minute poem. And I could go into that a little bit more detail, but the one minute poem is a personal narrative type poem. The present poem is about, I gotta go back to an extended metaphor poem about something that is in the present. And then the future is looking at what's happening around them um, and sort of predicting what they're gonna see in the future or making some sort of proposal about how to fix something. Uh, an activism centered poem. Um, so then they will move into the final digital portfolio presentation and we have a student reading at the end of the semester, which I always make open to the canvas to come and support the students. So you'll get an email later on about that. Um, the final, final portfolio, I have included a student sample from a previous course. Uh, and we also learned about podcasts. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna take us there. And here I have a short podcast that just gives a recap of all of those assignments throughout the semester. And then I included a student sample um, of a presentation where they went through each poem that they did throughout the semester to create a portfolio digitally, which AI cannot do. So <laughs> make sure you uh, incorporate some of these for your students as well. Um, but that is it. I created these three pages and I'm gonna be putting more together for each of my courses uh, because our students are very, very visually based um, mm -hmm. just because that's what they see all the time. They're very media focused. They have short attention spans. So you want to make sure that you have something visual for them. But that's it for me. And as you close out, first off, you're right. Thank you, Dr. Rivers. Yep. So Dr. Uh, Kruger, as you close out, if you don't mind, now that the volume is turned up, anything that you would love for us to hear, before uh, Dr. Stewart comes up, feel free to go ahead and play it. Well, let me uh, share this little video here, my introduction to my students. Welcome to Poetry and Performance. In this class, I have to be brave, to be honest, to be present, to push past the program response to dig deeper, to make choices, examine nuance and voice and style and character of what makes you you. Like the past, the present, and the future, you too, I want to know your dreams <laughs> by the look on your face. I want to know your fears around religion, gender, and race. I want to know that you know who you are, where you are heading, and prepared for how far here is where safety meets confidence with voice. Here is where words mean action, not noise. So I thank you. Thank you for having the vulnerability to go on this journey with your fellow peers and scholars. It may come out a whisper. It may come out a holler. But here, 
Let it come how it comes. Just let it out. I am Professor Janine Doc Huber, most common Professor K, or Doc. I am a mother, a writer, a public speaker, and an artist, using poetry as an outlet for social justice and exploring identity. I cannot wait to meet you all and tell you more about this course and hear what you have to say. Love it. I want to take your class. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Professor Kruger. All righty, next up, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Stewart. Yeah, hers is there, yeah. Hi, well, I'm Dr. Stewart. Uh, well, I realized this listening to my videos, but now, especially after listening to Professor Kruger, that I did not like hearing myself on uh, <laughs> our video. And I was like, I'm not, I gotta, I gotta spruce it up. I'm like, wah, wah, wah. But um, I'm like, surely my voice doesn't sound like that. I want to, real quickly before I open it, Uh, yeah, I just yes. want to do, you know how you can, um, you can view a different, because I, I want to, so this morning I was working um, in character um, animation, mm -hmm. and I created a media file um, talking, it was, it was like, a, you know, an oh, animated yeah. character. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So I, I wanna open and if you want, you can just simply right click on any of your links to the uh, yeah, any um, over to your right. Well, I haven't linked it yet. Though. Oh, so okay, no gonna, worries. I'm gonna go, to my go ahead. Drive. Yeah, so I was just trying to, um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, let me go to my work drive quickly. Okay. You may have to sign me out just in case if you're trying to get to your one drive. Let's go to, um, okay, perfect, perfect. Um, and I just want to see because I was trying to link it, and because it was um, because it was a media file, and I had like exported to YouTube or Vimeo. Okay, I'm just gonna get out of here. You know what I recommend, Dr. Kruger? Let's do this. Go ahead and close out of this browser, and then let's do this. Go back to um, Google Chrome at the bottom, and when you click on Google Chrome, okay, you can do that too. Microsoft was giving us too many choices there. Just, just trying to get to our drive. I don't remember what the, I was, it was like right before, and I was like, I don't know why I decided to try something right before. Um, you know, if you do it by modify, it was <laughs> yesterday at 9 p.m. and it left in the evening. It was, I just uploaded this morning. So 22 minutes ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right, let's see if it all. But while I'm waiting for that, I'll show my portfolio. Um, I think you can. Well, it won't. It won't open it. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to work on converting it to um, a YouTube file so I can add it to my portfolio. But for the sake of time, let's just get out of here. All right, and this is me. Okay. So, 
And then you click one and go ahead and go to uh, Google Chrome and it'll open in one of those tabs. Okay, how about right clicking? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So just sign in to your Yoga Journey. One thing that, uh, one thing for everyone listening in, um, a great thing about Adobe, if, you, if anyone was not aware that when you're using Adobe Express, you're using Adobe Brush, Photoshop, I can go on and on. There is a way to seamlessly be able just to take your project and create the uh, URL address that you're seeing right now with Dr. Stewart. You can just simply take that URL address and share it out with your students, share it out with your uh your peers in your department, say you're working on a project together, uh, similar to SharePoint, you can be able to share, but also be able to uh, collaborate on projects together or just have someone to view a project like we're doing now. So thank you, Dr. Stewart. Thank you. Um, all right, and so just real quickly, um, as Dr. Miles mentioned, I, I was really interested in us becoming an Adobe Creative Campus and, um, Last semester, and I, and actually, when we, um, when we, when we got the Creative uh, Cloud during the pandemic, it was one of the um, one of the softwares we were awarded. We were awarded. Um, I tried. I, I was trying out some of the programs with um, an online class. It was layout. It was layout designed into. Um, but last semester, I was really trying to think. You know, um, how can I make this class meaningful? So one thing, one thing that happened. Um, just in thinking about um, our students being employed, English and communication majors, um, and thinking about their portfolios and just looking at you know job requirements, a lot of employers are wanting students to have experience with the Adobe uh, suite. Um, another thing that um, that that prompted me to to, to push us in this direction is. Um, it, it, it was my technical writing class. I had, there was a, there was a student who um, has his own business. He creates his own um, clothing line. Um, and, and there are a bunch of students on campus, you know, who, who do that. And I think, and in in like Professor Kruger was saying, like may use Canva or find different ways to do these things. Um, but I was thinking, you know, what taking that creativity they already have and being able to, to use it um, with Adobe. And so even though, I see us being a creative campus um, as being instrumental to the classroom. I also, my, the way I envision it too, is that students even outside the classroom will want to use Adobe for their own personal purposes. And so for my layout and design class last semester, um, I was just trying to think, you know, like how can I make this meaningful? And, you know, and I'm, I'm always like just revising my classes and trying to make them meaningful for students. And so what I decided was, you know what, um, I would have every student create their own business and, um, and then create the products for their business. So their website, um, they design merch, um, we, uh, you know, their logo, their um, like advertisements so that we were using different Adobe uh, products. Now, the trick was um, there were some of these I had dabbled with before a little bit, and, but, but I was learning with, with the students. And I was thinking, you know, it would be so awesome if we could on campus get more training from Adobe so that, you know, I mean, it worked out well. There were some students who um, already knew how to use InDesign. So, you know, they were like, no, let's do this. And then um, we used Dreamweaver for our websites, which required a little, um, <laughs> a little bit of coding. I had um, I, um, I, I was teaching a, a the Boy Scholars class at that time. So. Some of those students were uh, computer science majors, so they came in and they helped us where we couldn't. <laughs> you know, we went as far as we could with uh, the coding, and then they helped us kind of get over that that um, that hump. But there was just there was a lot of you know me and students learning collaboratively, and um, you know, and which I'm which I'm okay with. But I would like to just be more um, you know in the classroom. I would like to be more versed. You know, be able to offer more to students um, because I've been trying to be. So that's um, those are kind of some of the, the reasons why I was interested in this. And so 
I don't, I don't remember how the conversation came up, but um, I was talking to Dr. Miles about it and she invited me to um, an Adobe training of some sort. And, uh, and one of the presenters was showing, they call it humanizing the, um, the syllabus, and which is kind of similar to what, what we did here. And I was like, that's what we need to do. And, then, and I left there going, we need to be, you know, um, a, a, an Adobe creative campus. And I'm really glad, Dr. Mino, that you participated because there was, um, I think he was a physics professor, um, but like he did, it was like all this physics stuff, <laughs> but, but using Adobe and showing how, showing how like with Adobe, it can cross, you know, it goes across curriculum. So without further ado, um, like Professor Kruger, I'm still working on mine. And um, when we were, when we had the training, I wasn't there in the mornings because I was teaching. And so, um, so I, I've got some work to do this weekend, needless to say. But so the, the, uh, the, the media file that I created with the talking animation, I was gonna add to this page, uh, but just kind of, this is just kind of my, my 150 word uh, bio that I use commonly. Um, these are the courses I teach at, at HT. Um, and then I've linked um, to my 1302 course, which I will show you. Um, my teaching philosophy, um, and then and that's kind of all I have here. My my next goal for this for my um for my teaching uh, portfolio is to link all of my courses. So that's kind of my first. So I see this document as a continual work in progress. But that's my that's my first goal, and then I'll, I'll move on to the next one. <laughs> Um, but my 1302 course. So college rhetoric and composition, um, and then how to reach me, of course, description, some images, major assignment. And then I was going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to, I want to add um, video here. And similar to what um, Professor Kruger was saying, you know, I want to add more kind of audio and visual to it. Um, you know, the good thing is, you know, and, and even in my course syllabus, there's a lot more information in here than this. And so one thing that, you know, I'm challenging myself to do is figure out how um, to present it so it's not too text heavy to find that a good medium between mm -hmm. the two um, while also providing students with all of the information. And, 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 and I think the good thing is too, once I, you know, on the front end, there's a lot of work to be done. But once I get it the way I want it, then, you know, I think, you know, it'll just require some updates. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so proposing a solution is one of our assignments that we do. Um, I created this little podcast. We can play a little bit of it if y'all want to. But yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. Okay. In this audio recording, we will talk about proposing a solution. For this assignment, you will be proposing a solution to a local problem using the problem solution justification structure to develop a digital multimodal proposal argument. You'll be writing to someone who <laughs> did this. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, oh. we're gonna work. On that. that was one of my big problems. <laughs> oh, and yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of like Dr. Mala. I may, I may need to take professor's group, professor group class. No, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, and then, you know, the why, the who and what, um, you know, where. And so, and normally for this assignment, students will, um, like propose, so over the course of the semester, they are writing arguments about a, 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 an issue, um, normally like a, a justice issue. Um, and the sample that, that I started, I'm dealing with uh, food insecurity in Bastrop County. I live in Bastrop County. And so normally students will uh, write a letter to um, someone in their local community who can help solve the problem. So 
leading up to the proposal argument, they've been doing research and like, um, like they write a causal argument, like what's causing the problem, so on and so forth. And so now we're in the semester and they're proposing a solution to someone who can help solve it. Um, so what I'm thinking through is, is that of course, I still want the writing piece, but for their, their assignment now, they're going to publish a website to the Youth Express that includes text, video, and hyperlinks and images. And so now this um, assignment, which was just predominantly before um, text, is now multimodal. Um, and then how, um, it's kind of the rubric of you know, due dates. And then I started a student sample. And so assuming I'm a student, um, my topic is reducing food insecurity in Bastrop County, a call to action. Mm. Um, I have a video and then I would, you know, I would work more on the page. Um, and so I'll have this finished before students need it, but we can, we can, I'll go through a little bit of it. Nice. It's pretty long though. It's like two minutes. And while this is coming up, you produce this in Adobe, yeah, Rush. Adobe Rush, everybody. And one thing that um, that Dr. Todd was showing us had, was how to um, like insert like the images and the music. And so I was trying, I was trying some of that. I'll go through. And then I kind of trying to come back to myself. So it was me just trying to play, <laughs> play with some of those things and enjoying it. Now I'm inserting some images throughout. All right. And then. I just bring it some. So, um, so I think it, it still needs some editing, but I was playing around with some of the things that you know, are so that and that. Right, because if you want to bring the students to mm -hmm. the reality of what they're actually doing, you're showing them pictures of the places. Yeah, yeah. I so. didn't think about that. But, um, but yeah, that's it. Excellent job. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. An absolutely great job of showing um, faculty uh, ideas of how they can use Adobe Express, Adobe Rush, which was the uh, editing and the recording, the audio that you saw with the embedded images, the creativity in that, but also uh, the idea about how you can get students to think about your, like you gave them a real world issue, a call to action. So I love that. So any faculty can do this. Any faculty with anything within your doing your curriculum, having the students to be creative. So next up, we're going to hear from Dr. Rosamino. So I am in the Department of Natural Sciences, as some of you are aware. And when I first started this group, I was very apprehensive. <laughs> I had uh, experience with Adobe Photoshop and other Adobe products, but they were very strictly toward research and science. And those are really boring diagrams to make. Very, very boring. So the idea of me putting my face <laughs> on a video, <laughs> horrifying making a podcast I'm, i have never been i've been interested in listening but never have i said i want to make a podcast so i just want to tell you all that it's so easy that if that is something that you feel inclined to do you can do it without that much work so i did put um some uh, notes together because i have no memory anymore and the first thing i want to tell you is why i think you should use at least express and rush even if this is not uh, what you think would be your cup of tea. So the first one was intuitive use. Mm. I have not in all my years of using all of these software to teach students or to present anything, have something so intuitive. Literally you select and drag, select and delete, select and crop, add stuff, drag. It, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, how much you can do by just, it, it'd be like as if you have it here in front of you and then you can just pick it up and put it where you want it to be. 
So the intuitive use for both of them is a, a sale point for me. The other one was time saving for material generation. <laughs> I do make a little graphs and put together for my students. And it usually takes me a lot longer because either you do it on PowerPoint where things move where they shouldn't and then they get <laughs> off center, or you do it in Adobe Photoshop which takes freaking forever to load because yeah. it is a heavy program. Yeah. This thing, two minutes. I created a flow chart. I'm not gonna show you the flow chart right now, but I created it for another one of my classes. So absolutely cut some time for me to be able to give them fresh material that's not just randomly on the internet, but that I create myself. Um, I have the fact that it doesn't just make web pages. We went into uh, what we were, uh, taking the workshop on how to do these things. Uh, he briefly showed us, but I have already made, let's see, I have already made two um, other things. Like one of them is a resume. They have templates for resume with examples of how you, what you would write in there. So I am going to teach my students mm -hmm. to make resumes in there because mm -hmm. my class, like you would see, the one that I teach for this, is for students that are leaving. So they need to be able to show something else besides the stuff that I have myself, which is just boring black and white, my name, contact information. I mean, you can make changes really quickly and all you have to do is copy paste and move stuff around with your mouse. Okay. And they actually have a usable image and video database. So <laughs> I don't know if you ever do this, but sometimes I need something like picture of a plant and I have to Google it. <laughs> and then I have to find one that's not copyrighted, that doesn't have the watermarks so that I can actually use it. And then I have to read, like I have to source it back to wherever it came from. Adobe in itself has a database. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go looking around. I can go into Express, create a picture, search whatever it is that I need. And that's it. And if I can't not find it, there's now AI image generation. Now, and I'm gonna say this because it happened to me, it still has some of the issues that uh, currently play AI image generation, like, you know, people with seven fingers, <laughs> but it's still good uh, in operating with simple things. If you can't find it, you can tell the machine to create it for you and then you can modify it uh, somewhere else. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you what I did. And I want you to please Forgive me for the um, lack of creativity. It took a lot. I saw my colleagues work and I thought I need to do something better. I, my, no. The beginning of my portfolio was extremely word heavy and very wordy, very. So I tried my best to change that. And this is the result. Let's see how it takes to go. And now, notice that I did not log in. As Dr. Miles said, you do not have to log in. You can put in a link. I hyperlinked my portfolio to the presentation, and then I just open it. So the first thing I did, I have never done a teaching portfolio, so I also have to Google what that was. Uh, and what I did is I put a picture in here. And I thought the thing that brought me to biology was me seeing a neuron. And that's what that is. So at the beginning, what I did is I wasn't talking to you all, I was talking to the students. So all I did was tell the students that that's a picture of a neuron. And then you can take it with specialized microscopy. And that's a picture of me like 10 years ago. So a picture of a neuron so that they know that they can do this. Like you can do it. Like me, I can do this, you can do this if you get to the point in which you can have access to the machine. Uh, after that, I did the standard stuff. Uh, professional experience summary. I just needed them to know that I do have the credentials to teach them uh, what I'm about to teach them and why I think that you should listen to me when I talk about biology. Uh, who am I as an educator? I have a really hard time being not wordy, so I decided to start with bullet points. If they're interested in this part, that uh, they can actually read the bullet points instead of me writing a whole page. And the current course. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the presentation for a second because I want to, I know I have points to make. Okay, so things that you can do that I did in portfolio that I learned during like the first two days. You can hyperlink a word. That means you can actually attach a website to a word, which is something you can do in a lot of word processing and it's powerful, right? To another page website. That's normal, that's something you do all the time. You can create a button. So it's not just a hyperlink a word, that's all that you can actually put it in the center of the page and say, click here. If you wanna go somewhere else to do something. You can embed a video, you already saw that in the previous examples, I did it myself house in a different site. YouTube, you can use it. And I remember this because Dr. Cervantes did it so effectively to tell your personal history, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't want to write a lot, you can make a short video and say, hey, this is me. I'm from this place. This is where I come from. This is my background. Welcome students. And yeah. something I did, uh, which is something that we have been doing in research, but now I can put it in my portfolio, is I can create with Adobe and embed QR codes. So if I have information to give the students about meetings, if I want to give them my CV, if I want to show them my publication history, I can link out stuff with a QR code, which means they can just use your phone, stare at the screen, and then be done. Because one of the things I have a harder time is getting the students to go back to the syllabus, copy and paste them, and then go outside to look for what they need. So this will make it easier for them uh, to do all this. Now, I did want to make a quick note about right. I did want to make one note about the video first. So I just nice. said that I do not like seeing myself in video. I hate it. I also do not like hearing myself. <laughs> Uh, now the hearing myself, I can't help it. <laughs> but the video, you can help it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna mute myself because I do not want to hear. No, don't you. you. We <laughs> love it. No. It's the creativity. I like you listen a little bit, but I just want to show you that I basically covered the majority of my video with other things. That wasn't me. So it made me <laughs> like the students get to see me, they get to hear me. But also you can use tools so that you can hide for a little while until you're more comfortable and then you can make a better video, which is my problem. So I'm, I'm just going to show you all of these picture video I added to my video are from the Adobe database. Nice. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Rosa Mino and I am a bilingual, I speak Spanish and English educator with a detail-oriented mindset. Uh, that does strategic planning and quantitative data analysis. I have a PhD in physiology, which means I am infinitely oh, interested that. in how parts of an organism work. And though I have been in the U.S. for over 15 years, I am originally from Ecuador in South America. That's where I'm stopping. <laughs> so I wow. put in, I, get, I didn't job. know any of these things. I know how to do microscopy videos. That was, that was the extent of my video knowledge. And in the, the two days, <laughs> I learned from all of you and from the, I learned how to put a frame on the video, how to get pictures from the database in Adobe, put them in the video so that I can explain myself instead of them just in my face. <laughs> and that's going to be incredibly valuable for me because a lot of my students have trouble understanding some of the things I'm saying because it's so esoteric on the assumption of the picture. So I'm, I'm going to sell there with the portfolio. <laughs> Because it really is an amazing job, Dr. Mino. And really quick, tell everybody you produced that video in using Adobe Rush. Rush. All right. Yeah. Just want to keep nailing in and driving, uh, uh, driving in that point. So everyone that's tuning in and watching, this is you. You have the tools, and you can do this. If Dr. Mino and Dr. Stewart, Professor Kruger, Dr. Rivers, like if we all can do this, you can do it too. So uh, I did want to make a point. I know I just glossed over it. This is a picture that I asked the AI to generate. And because I didn't like the colors it gave me, I just put it in Adobe Express again. Like I downloaded it, put it back in Adobe Express and it changed the color. It's easy. It's so easy. 
So I really encourage you to try it. I feel like powerful with it. <laughs> Such a good for you. All right. So the course that I'm, 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 I feel like I'm fine. You're fine. No, you're good. So the class that I directed this work for uh, was laboratory management. Uh, the whole idea of the class is to cover preparation and management of a laboratory pharmacy and project building. Now, laboratory management, uh, because there are things that are standard like lab safety, that's a little bit easier to and teach the students. Project building, however, is more complicated. And that was the part that I really, really wanted to concentrate on when I was doing this. This is the reason why I, uh, I proposed uh, to uh, attend this workshop so I can work with this one. So the things that I have to do now for my syllabus, which is the beginning of all, is I can make it more compact. I use headings so that instead of the students having to read through my whole syllabus and say, there's that information they can just go like that. Okay, here in this giant picture with this representative heading, that's where I go to get that information. And then you can actually use hyperlink for circular referral. When I say circular referral, I mean you can create your syllabus and say, if you want to know more about this, the professor, click here. So you go back to the portfolio. And the portfolio, you can say, if you want to learn more about this class, you can go here. So it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's a big deal. But it is important because that means they can stay within the web without having to go outside back to the syllabus and say, where was this again? And, and that stops some of them from actually. So I'm gonna I'm gonna now my syllabus is a lot more boring looking. <laughs> I needed to get the information. I gave them the learning objectives in case I care, the primary assignments, and topics, general grading policy. I make sure and tell them not to eat in the lab because that is so incredibly important. Um, but other than that, I, I, I found that a three page syllabus became this. It's, it's not that many words. What I did do is here, I actually want to give them their guidance. Now, I did two things because I wanted to be able to give them all the information they needed but also I didn't want to bore them it was to the point where they don't listen or don't look at what they need. I created this guideline that's very wordy, exceptions, and then I created the example, which they can go and look and say, okay, which is a take home from the guidelines. And if they need details, they can go back to this one and say, okay, this is actually all the points I made. So the, that, the research plan was going to be the why, the what, you pretend to be a laboratory manager, you're creating a, a project. Uh, and the project is completely open for them. They can come up with whatever they want. I take them through how to find uh, projects, but that is a different assignment. Uh, so they are told where they're supposed to publish this or where they're supposed to build, how to make their contribution. And then this is the wordy part. Okay? If they want to come back and say, okay, what am I missing on my aims? They can go back to this part and say, okay, I have to say this, I have to have this, this is the formula that I need to do. But if they want to you have the take home because they're just starting, I uh, put together a uh, page based on the management final project that was uh, Right by Talita Brand. So I did ask the student for uh, permission to use her work. So this is actually some of her slides. So this student decided that she wanted to talk about specifically pythons in Florida. That's it. So the first thing the students have to do, right, is what's this about? The product. That has to do with the introduction, significance, and the hypothesis. For the, in the title, right? All I asked for the descriptive, so that's what the student did. This is the title. For the significance, which is, I mean, we know what significance means, but the students sometimes have a hard time remembering all these scientific terms or these terms in general about the stuff that this chapter that they need for the research paper. So I figure, again, from watching you guys, we should mm -hmm. say this, I can ask the question and tell them, this is the question you need to ask for this part. 
Why should we care about you? <laughs> so, on the left is the example of the student, uh, sample for the student. On the right, I just asked a question. Hypothesis, same thing, what is it? But also, for, for me, it was very important for them to understand the uh, format of the hypothesis. This is a requirement for me. I need them to write it this way because it, it requires several steps, which I go over to us. So I took her thing and I broke it down and if, if, and then, which is the format that I wanted to do. Uh, and then the end, which is, you know, what are these very specific goals for the project? I mean, this is all question, right? Maybe a couple of guidelines and then the example for the student so that they don't feel like I'm filling them. This, this used to be two and a half pages. Of me just give, I give them an assignment, a super long to read <laughs> assignment that invariably the students will skim through, which that they can now do in part uh, So the last part will not be the last part, but this is the, the meat of the assignment, giving them examples of what they have to do, and just things like don't forget your controls. And then the last bit is the expected outcomes imitation for sources. Now the sources are standard, but when I ask them to create projects, I also ask them to know, to guess what they think that will happen and what could go wrong. <laughs> because if they don't know what could go wrong, then they can take measures to fix it or even revise their own project. So in this case, I put exactly what she had uh, for uh, what she thinks she will happen and why it might go wrong and why. Because one of the things I have the hardest time uh, with the students is getting them to uh, know the idea of limitations, right? Limitations is, if you use it in normal vocabulary, limitations means the things that you can't get past, right? But for them, uh, when they're not thinking about a project, especially because this is not a project they're doing, this is a thought exercise where they have the ability to say, like, I'm gonna take a hundred subject tests. That's not gonna happen in person, but they can pretend like it's happening. Mm -hmm. um, when you have that kind of uh, thought exercise, limitations are harder to think through. Unless a lot of stuff has happened to you, you've already been doing this for a long time. So, uh, besides that, one of the things I ask them to do, and I ask them here, is for them to create pictures of the kind of um, tests that they're gonna do, or they need to, and they need a diagram for, for me to explain or know better what they're uh, proposing. Because for example, this student right here, and I, I have to go and pop up, uh, was saying that she wanted to do a canvas, an area of Florida, right? To figure out uh, where the pilots were. That was the idea of what she wanted to do. But then you think, okay, well, how do you know if you already didn't go through one area or if you already went to you know, twice? So that's where she came up with this. And this is something that the students can quickly say, right? That they're gonna propose and say, well, I'm gonna divide it into I don't know, one meter by one meters. And then I'm gonna send one person on each side. And then that's that's it, that's their square. So um, this is the kind of thing that they can do really quickly with Adobe Express. They can actually do nice. a bunch of diagrams. Which this student did not do with Adobe Express. She did it because she had other, uh, she has experience with other programs. <laughs> but this is something that you actually need to be knowledgeable. And it's an issue because students in that class, it's a small class. So they can't rely on classmates that know how to use other programs. They have to do it themselves. And this is going to definitely help those students that, that cannot do this. Okay, so that's the end. Um, what I wanted to show you today, I do have some other elements in my portfolio. Uh, I do have some other elements in my portfolio. You can actually, as I said, you can link things out. So what I did is, for example, if the students wanted to see my publications, I was able to put together uh, both OPEDs and scientific research papers, so public opinions, all of this. For them to say, well, I don't care um, what her research was about. Right now, I want to know what she cares about so that they can go and do their things.
And that is something that I never gave my students before. You know, I started the semester and I said, hi, I'm Rosa Mino. I have a PhD in Salamolector Physiology. I'm a URLG professor. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> and it's, it's so much easier now for them to go back and say, OK, the reason why she's talking about race, uh, the biological basis of race, and you know, mm -hmm. this part is in health is because she cares about this. And, and that's important to me also, mm -hmm. right? Because if the students think you care about something, they'll hear the assignments toward it and they'll learn more about it. Things that they maybe didn't think that they wanted to learn. And now they're, they can use it for the right? I think that's about all I wanted to say. Let me make sure I didn't have um, more slides because right. so I just wanted to show you. So as I mentioned earlier, I just wanted to show you a quick picture. It doesn't just do uh, syllabus, it doesn't just do presentations, web pages, you can do other things. This is an example of the stuff I was working on. It, it gives you writing here so that you can use it as a sample. And you, this is something that had already a layout and I changed the colors because I didn't like them. Mm. So you can do that too. It's, it's, it's incredibly easy to do. So if you're in business, your students are going to need, I mean, actually anywhere, your students are going to be a resident. But my bio students sending a black and white resume are more likely to get higher than if you're in a communication. <laughs> if you're in communication and you set a black and white resume, they're gonna say, well, what did the student learn? <laughs> because mm -hmm. they should know how to design better than black and white paper. Mm -hmm. um, right. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time to this. All right. and I love appreciate you all all righty so ladies and gentlemen I am just I I am filled right now and I hope that you all are energized of everything that you have saw today so again I want to thank you all for attending our uh, faculty affinity Adobe affinity group their showcase again all the work that has been done in terms of innovating teaching and learning for this fall term. So a very big congratulations to all of those nine faculty. So you heard from again, Dr. Mino, you heard from Dr. Shawanda Stewart in English, I'm sorry, Dr. Mino's natural science biology. You heard from Professor Kruger, who is our faculty fellow. And again, a very big, huge congratulations to also those who are not here and also just left. We had Dr. Uh, Rivers, uh, in education, we had uh, Professor Pena that is in history. We had Dr. Carlos Cervantes in kinesiology. We had Dr. Rafael Vela that was in communication. And I'm trying to think Hudson. if I go in around the room. And lastly, yes, Dr. Hudson, Julie Hudson, who was in English. The reason I wanted to make sure that I gave those flowers out to all of those that had worked hard is so that everyone listening in, everyone that is here, it does not matter what discipline that you teach in you can incorporate Adobe tools into your classroom. And uh, for those that are a little even intimidated and you're like, I don't even know where to start. One good way to start is just simply asking your students to use this. Why not use a bottom-up approach? Students are creative, students are intuitive. And this is the good way to really stretch them and having them to learn uh, from theory and curriculum, but tying in and allowing them to be creative and completing your project. So again, so I want to say thank you. We definitely will have uh, coming up and uh, the announcing of, again, Houston Tillotson being named a new Adobe Creative Campus. So we'll have additional workshops. We'll have a new cohort number two of faculty that can apply uh, to become a new Adobe faculty fellow. And again, we want to say a very big special thank you to Adobe uh, for taking time out uh, of, their, uh, of their schedules to be here this summer to work with us and to pilot this project. So a very big, huge thank you to Adobe, uh, Dr. Todd Taylor at the uh, North Carolina Chapel Hill, and also to, to Brooke uh, Spire. So we're very grateful. So with no further ado, if anyone has any questions about Adobe, feel free to contact me. So again, I'm Dr. Jennifer Miles. And it has been a pleasure to be before you all today. Thank you all. Thank you for joining.
I sure do appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. And look, always hold me down with the technology. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let me also end this. Uh-oh, Dr. Paul. <laughs>